guys, um, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zoa, and today I will be making a Harry Potter wand. Um, so I've bought my supplies, but we're just gonna head straight to the vlog to see how all of that went down. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is basically me deciding which paintbrush to use. Um, since we are making a replica of Hermione Granger's wand, um, I wanted it to be slightly thin at the base, um, and that's why I decided to go with size 10. I've used um, like size 11 before, but I think um, Hermione's wand is a little bit thin at the base, so that's why I went with size 10. Here I'm deciding which colour that I want to paint the wand with. In the books and movies, Hermione's wand wood is of vine. And um, this is different to the wood that my friend requested, um, Fundo, for his wand. He requested an oak or willow wood. And like I googled some pictures. And it's slightly lighter than the colours that I already bought. So I just decided to buy the colour white, which I would use to lighten with the colours that I already really have and it came out quite nicely so who it is it's your girl z the one and only um well i really didn't know why i was there but you know i was on my off day at school because coco v and i decided to help this clown find some things very fun very nice and yeah so the next thing that i wanted was some cotton string so if you look at Hermione's wand, it has like these really nice, cool, leafy designs around it. And I wanted to replicate that in my own sort of way to add a sort of pageantry to the wand that I was making. But all of these cotton strings, like they felt really soft. Um, my grandmother had this really nice, durable cotton string, but I wasn't keen on going all the way to my grandmother's place just for some cotton string. So I looked all over this massive you know warehouse um it's called bargain basket this place that i'm in it's this really weird awkward discount like walmart, walmart like dead ass so it has everything besides that damn cotton string that i was looking for and so i decided to just go back to the station and get the soft ass cotton string but in retrospect it actually worked out pretty nicely and it's cheap and it was surprisingly more durable than i thought and so just to round up everything i have my first paintbrush my second paintbrush in case i flop for the first one my string or wool my glue and my white paint and y'all let's go pay up so we got the stuff um now we're on our way back home i'll probably only make the ones tomorrow because i'm very behind on work and it's a bit ghetto right now i don't even know why i'm here i just wanted to wear some of my birthday outfits because i haven't been wearing them so that's what's up so yeah um i'll probably only do the ones tomorrow or today, honestly, if I don't feel like doing work, I'll see about it. Um, but yeah, this was this was quite fun. Um, smiling under my mask, by the way. Same, same, same. It's so weird why we smile yeah, under the mask, I, but the, like the people is, can't like, see me, us. Me, I just always need to have like lip gloss underneath my mask. But it's like, not gonna see <laughs> We literally are in the middle of the road right now. I mean, not quite, but sort of. So, if you can't hear us, that's because there's cars zooming past. Oh, so, love and light, girlies. Bye. So I was really lazy. I didn't really want to do any work today. Apparently Vula is down. So yeah, I've decided, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to make the wand today because not really keen on doing work. Um, psychiatry department is the ghetto right now. And yeah, as you can see, I'm in my apron. And yeah, let's let's do the thing. So the first thing that I had to do was make my own paper mache. Um, like when you actually feel the wand in your hand and it has paper mache, it feels like sort of like a real wand. And it's quite easy to make a paper mache. As you can see, you add a little bit of flour and some water and you basically just mix it until it's like nice and combined. I didn't want to use a lot of flour because the last time I made the wands I used quite a lot of flour and I made a lot of paper mache that I ended up having to throw away. But surprise surprise the same thing happened here as well so yeah just try not to use a lot of flour friends. 
but yeah i just kept mixing it and mixing it until it became like really thick and gooey and in other videos that i've watched about paper mache they put it in the microwave um i really don't know why they do this um personally this was perfect for me um i really like the consistency and yeah once it's really nice co nicely combined you ready to go and you ready to use it all right so i have my paper mache my glue um that i'll be using for the with the cotton wool i have my white paint and i also have my brown paint and think it was the color it was like the color chocolate i have my paper or newspaper for like the whole paper mache i have my paint brush size 10 and i have a pair of scissors and i have the string um it's actually quite funny how i didn't use so much string okay so the first thing that i did was that i took the newspaper dipped it into the flour and water mixture the paper mache and then you know i let it run off just a little bit because i didn't want it too soggy and then i started wrapping it around the thicker side of the paintbrush basically you are creating the handle of the wand and this is obviously subjective so it's up to you as to how many layers of paper mache that you're going to wrap around um, the thicker side of the paintbrush i like it to be slightly thick but obviously it varies from wand to wand for instance harry's wand is much much thicker um towards that side of the paintbrush or that side of the wand and um hermione's wand is much different it's a little bit thinner all right so after a quick hand wash i decided to put on the pageantry so what you do is you take your glue and you basically pour it out you take the cotton string and you drench it in the glue I made sure that every bit and piece of the string was covered in the glue. This is really important because what I'm about to do will actually make it make sense. All right, so what I then did was I took the string and I started wrapping it around the paintbrush. Um, I liked to create a base so that I can easily wrap it around the paintbrush like so. I wanted to create like a spiral pattern, carry it on going, and then once I reached like just close to the tip, I wrapped it back around, back to the base, and then I just wrapped it around to complete the entire string. And there you go, simple yet elegant pageantry um, that made it look just a little bit like... Yeah, I, I don't know why you're here, girl. Okay, fine. But anyways, look at that. Now everyone missed the joke. Uh, well, actually, I am the joke. Kelly, give you no marks. Anyways, before I was really interrupted, I decided to add another layer of paper mache because when I painted it, I didn't want it to look really weird at the base. So I just added another layer of paper mache. Again, this is objective. Um, it's up to you as to how many layers of paper mache you will add. All right, so I wanted everything to dry just a little bit quicker, so I used my oven. You kind of have to be really careful when you use the oven because it literally could just burn. So basically what we're doing here is that we are baking it. And yeah. The thing is, the reason why I like this method is because it sort of hardens the paper mache. Like, guys, like when I say it really feels like a wand, it really does. Like, ask Z definitely like did it so as you can see it was starting to brown at the end because of you know the oven so you kind of have to be really careful <laughs> if you're gonna use the oven because you could literally just set it alight i almost set it alight the last time when i made the wands of course did. the consumer studies lesson we're going back to arts and craft and we'll be painting as you can see, he's going to be mixing um, his white with the chocolate brown. You and raggedy yar. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, the mixing, like the color that you want when it comes to painting your wand is really subjective. Hermione's wand is a little bit on the lighter side. Um, and from Googling, you know, the willow and the oak type of woods, I was like, mm, there's some license, like, you know, creative license that I can take with the color that I um, want to use for this one. So I decided to add, you know, the brown and the white together and it formed this, you know, light, very light um, brown color. And oh, I there's don't, me. Hi. I don't, I don't. I don't yes, girl. Anyway, on, as you can see, yeah, as you can see, the you know want is you know wet but it's kind of complete right now all you need to do is just dry 
and yeah this is basically the one guys i'm kind of done right now um you know it's fairly dry at this point but that's sort of the replica of Amani's one that i wanted to make it came out really really nice like much better than i thought it would and i'm really happy about it it is in terms of dimensions it's slightly longer i i don't know about you but all of the ones in harry potter seem to be way oh longer girl. than the ones that i've made but that's okay you know there's some creative license here and obviously we making our own ones because jk rowling is a turf and these are all of the ones that i've made so far the elder one wand. on that side is the elder wand on the left and that's the middle, the middle is hermione's. hermione's and on the right it's harry's and that is how you make your own wand friends so yeah join me next time, time.